The three body problem is indeed cool, but I want to show you the two body problem because the two body problem is actually solvable. We can get it down to a, an equivalent one dimensional problem. I'm going to show you all the steps in under three minutes. Longer video is in that link down below that related videos. If you want to watch the longer video, it's very long and complicated, but here we go. So we start with two objects right here in three dimensional space that has six degrees of freedom, right? Three Cartesian coordinates, three Cartesian coordinates. We call those positions R1 and R2, and we can write the Lagrangian in terms of those, and you get six degrees of freedom. So you'd have six Lagrange equations. No one wants to do that. Okay, so what we do then is we write the uh, objects in terms of their location of the center of mass, capital R, and the vector from R1 to R2, lowercase r. If you do that, because the potential only depends on the relative positions of those two, you can do a Lagrangian in those two, lots of math there, and there's no potential term for capital R, so R velocity is zero, it's a constant, we're gonna pick it to be zero, and the position to be zero. So if you set the center of mass to be at the origin at rest, then now, boom, you just got rid of three coordinates. Now we're down from six, I can't count, to three coordinates. After that, um, what we do is to say angular momentum is r cross p, right? So we're using the reduced mass here that you get that reduced mass out of the algebra in m1, m2 over uh, r total m. So the angular momentum can be written as this for that one equivalent particle, the reduced mass, where that's r dot. But it's constant because there's no torque on the system. If there's no torque on the system and it's constant, we can pick uh, an x and y coordinate for r, an x dot, y dot for the velocity, and if you do that, you get an angular momentum in the z direction. Well, let's just pick, let's just pick it to be in the z direction. So now we only have two degrees of freedom. We got down to x and y. And then after that, if we switch to polar coordinates, we can write the Lagrangian as this. There's no theta term in the potential, so theta dot is equal to a constant, and we can solve it for this plug that in right here, and there's your one-dimensional equivalent equation of motion that only depends on R, the end, under three minutes. I did it. I did it. It's a lot, though.